Hi everyone, hope you're having a good week. It's the final countdown, the last few days of homeschool, hopefully, and then our children will all be back in school, we hope, which is very exciting for them. It's the best place for them. We're not excited, we're going to be devastated and we'll miss them terribly, but we're just happy for them that they're going to be there, right? So this week is Parashesky Sissa, and just to remind you where we're up to, it's just after Har Sinai still, and we haven't moved an inch, we're still in the same place. The Jewish people are all encamped at the bottom of the mountain, and Moshe has gone back up to get some more instructions from Hashem about the building of the Mishkan. So Hashem's in the middle of telling him um, various details about all the spices for the incense and about all of the vessels that are going to go in the Mishkan when he pauses and interrupts and says hang on a minute Moshe do you know what's going on downstairs at the bottom of the mountain you're not going to believe this all of the Jewish people are dancing around a golden calf do you remember we just had this whole big thing where I revealed myself to them and they witnessed Hashem and open miracles and I gave them the Torah and they swore to me that you know they were going to be my people and they were going to keep the Torah and like literally it was a few days ago and they're dancing around the golden calf and Hashem puts it to Moshe like this he says your people who you took out of Egypt are behaving really badly and Moshe turns around to him and says uh hang on a minute Hashem it's your people who you took out of Egypt and it's an amazing transformation in Moshe here. If you remember, he started off very reluctant to being their leader. He was not up for this job at all. He felt he was underqualified. And now he's the one who's fighting for them because Hashem says to him, I'm absolutely furious and I want to destroy all of them and I'm going to start a new nation just starting from you. All of your descendants will be my new nation. And Moshe says, no, they're your people. And Hashem, let me remind you of something. You took them out of Egypt. Now, let me remind you a bit about Egypt. You know, it's all very well that you've taken them out and given them the Torah, but they, these people, they were born into slavery and they were born into a culture that was completely immersed in idol worship. That's very normal for them. That's what they were brought up on. And they've all been traumatized. They were born into slave labor and they've never known freedom. That's what they're used to. And suddenly, overnight, they've gone from being a people of slaves to a free people. And they've witnessed all these miracles and it's all been mind blowing. And then they got taken to this mountain and you gave them the Torah and we were all really excited and you revealed yourself to them. But don't you think maybe all of that was a bit much for such traumatized people? They've all got PTSD. And you know what? Again, this is still Moshe talking to Hashem. I really am starting to get them. Hashem, let me remind you a bit about my upbringing. I was given away as a child and I never really had any parents. I only came back to the Jewish people when I was an 80 year old man, by which time my father had died. Haven't really had much time to get to know my mother because I've been pretty busy um, in my role as leader. So no one really looked after me. And it it came to a point as an adult where I kind of had a surrogate father figure. My father-in-law Yisro actually became a really important person in my life because I'd never really had somebody looking out for me. And so now I think I kind of get where these people are coming from. You know, this isn't about you, Hashem. It's not that they don't care about you or that they don't think you exist. It was just a few days ago that they saw you. That was a pretty big moment in their life when God revealed himself to them. I'm sure they haven't forgotten. It's not that they don't want to believe in you. But think what I am to them. When they were in slavery, their parents weren't looking after them. Their parents were also in slavery. They never really had anyone looking out for them. And suddenly I turn up and I say, you know, Hashem's going to take you out and he's going to look after you. And yeah, I know Hashem, you were the one who was doing all the really cool miracles and the plagues and splitting the sea. And I know I can't do that, but I was the physical manifestation for them of all of those amazing things. And I've been the one who they come to when they have problems, when they've run out of water, when they're hungry, when they need something to eat or drink. I've become this father figure to them. And now I've gone up a mountain and they've counted 40 days. And I said I'd be back in 40 days, but they've miscalculated. It's all gone a little bit wrong. And now they're panicking. They're like, ah, we need our Moshe back. You know, he was looking after us. He was like, oh, we need an intermediary. We need some kind of physical object. Oh, I know. I remember what we used to do in Mitzrayim. We used to have a gold, we used to have idols and all sorts of other intermediaries. So let's just make ourselves a golden calf. And then, you know, 
we can just use that to talk to Hashem. So Hashem, don't worry, hang in there. And now at this point, Moshe reminds Hashem, do you remember you made this promise to Avram and Yitzhak and Yaakov? That was 500 years ago that Avram was born. It's taken a really long time to get to this point and you promised them that their people, their descendants would become your nation. And it's taken a really long time, but it might just take a bit longer. Like maybe just give them a bit of time to get used to this massive transformation that's happened to them. So you know what, Hashem, I'm just going to go down, check in on them, see what's going on. And now Moshe goes down and even though he's prepared and Hashem's told him what they're doing, seeing something is not the same as hearing about it. So he gets to the bottom of the mountain, he sees what's going on. And when he comes down, he's holding these luchos in his hands that Hashem's given him. And this was the first set of luchos, the really miraculous set which we're told had like letters floating and suspended in midair because they were made by Hashem and you could look at them from one side to the other and you could read the writing all the way through. And they were incredible. Moshe smashed them to smithereens when he got to the bottom of the mountain because he got such a shock at what the people were doing. And he realized that this miraculous set, all these open miracles that the people have been experiencing, they're just not on that level yet. It's just too much too soon. And he needs to just give them a bit more time to gradually build their way back up to that. Now, interestingly, when he gets there, he notices the only people not involved in dancing around the golden calf was the tribe of Levi. And when Moshe gets there, he calls out, Mi la Hashem elai. It's like a rally call. Who is for Hashem? Come with me. Because he actually goes around and Hashem tells him to kill all the people who were involved in the idol worship. And who comes when he calls? It's all the tribe of Levi. So why aren't they involved? And why are they the ones who turn up and they're on Hashem's side? Well, maybe it's because Levi weren't actually involved in the slavery either. Maybe they're not traumatized. Maybe they're okay with waiting a bit longer to see if Moshe comes back because they weren't quite as needy or as dependent on him because they didn't have that associated trauma of having been in slavery. And so they go around and they sort all the people out. And then Moshe goes back up the mountain and he writes a second set of luchas. Now this second set, it's written by Moshe, it's man-made, they're not as impressive, they're not, they don't have that wow factor that the first ones did. And yet, when he comes back down the mountain, the people all notice something about Moshe. Suddenly, his whole face is glowing, he's got this like holy light literally emanating from his face and they can't even look at him, he has to wear a veil after that, because it, it, there's clearly something that's happened to him. Now why is it that this set of luchas, they weren't miraculous, they weren't from Hashem, why did this set of luchas have such a big profound effect on him? But I think really what's going on is Moshe has been through a massive transformation. He's gone through this whole process where he started off as a reluctant leader, but then suddenly he's become em empathetic, he gets them, he understands his people. He's gone from being um, unconfident and unsure of himself, not thinking that he's right for the role, and suddenly he's realized that actually he's a really important person to them and he feels his own worth and his own value because he's realized how much the people need him. And at that point when he thinks he's going to lose them because Hashem's going to destroy them, he also realizes how important they are to him and how much he cares for them. And suddenly, you know, the boy who grew up with no family, no Jewish family, he's got all the Jewish people as his extended family and he's really important to them and they're really important to him. And so it makes a lot of sense that this second set of luchas that he's made himself and that he's invested in and he's worked on and this um, process that he's gone through as a leader, this transformation, that's what's changed him. You know, being handed something by Hashem, great, I'm sure they were really nice luchas, but actually having to work on it himself and um, make it into a, a change, a gradual process that he's gone through, that had a much more transformative effect and you could literally see the change on his face. So I think Moshe as a leader teaches us and he was teaching the people, it's okay guys, hang in there. It's not gonna happen overnight. This is a slow, gradual process. Life is a journey and it takes time and you build up gradually, step by step. And you can't do everything overnight. And he reminds Hashem that that's the case, that they're not gonna suddenly be on this really high level overnight and that it's going to take time and he reminds the people as well you know we've slipped up you did the a girl but you know we're moving on we've got the second set of luchas we're going to get even more mitzvahs and it's going to be okay we're going to do it together 
And look, I've changed. You know, he, as their leader, he's not saying I've got all the answers and I've worked it all out. He's saying, you know, even for me, change takes time and I've become a different person and that's okay. So I hope everyone has a good rest of the week, enjoys the last few days with all their children at home and have a very good Shabbos.